to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, I'm Lindsay, and welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you who know who I am, you probably realize this isn't my normal content. After owning my own studio, I figured I would do some pole dance related videos, some informational videos for those of you who are new subscribers, or those of you who just find it interesting to hear about me talk about pole. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button down below, it would help me out a ton, and thumbs up this video if you find it helpful. I decided to do a video about pole heels because I own a lot of pole heels. I don't own the most by any means, but I do own a good amount. I have some of them behind me here today that I will be using to show you guys some examples. I feel like I've just acquired a lot of knowledge in the five years that I've been doing poll about heels and it's super helpful to beginners and to seasoned pole dancers about the different styles, different sizes, different heel heights, different everything, different materials, all of the things about heels that you need to know, especially if you want to pick your first pair of heels, this is going to be really, really helpful to your beginners. Another reason why I'm making this video is a lot of my students end up asking me, which heels should I buy for my first pair, or what is the easiest pair to walk in, blah, blah, blah. So this video is going to be nice to just be able to send to my students. First thing I'm going to talk about is body height. Body height does play a huge role in your heels, and nobody really talks about this. Personally, me being a giraffe, I'm five foot ten. So in heels, I'm usually way over six foot. So I'm pretty tall with heels on, which I don't mind at all. Some people are self-conscious about how tall they are. Some people who are shorter want taller heels. So I would say if you are taller, don't really opt for shorter shoes. And the reason I say this, because when you purchase smaller heels, the length of your foot, because usually when you're taller, you also have bigger feet. In my case, I wear a size 10. So the taller you are, the bigger your foot is, right? So the heel that you purchase, especially if they're shorter heels, like six or seven inch, they're gonna look even shorter in comparison to how long your foot is. I really notice it when I'm wearing seven inch heels, they look like six inch on me, right? Who wears a size five or six? A seven inch heel is almost gonna look like an eight inch on them because their foot is shorter, so the heel itself is going to look taller. The length of your foot in comparison to how tall the heel is. And that's why I, I do see a lot of dancers who are my height or taller and they really opt for like six inch heels, six and a half inch heels. And I'm like, girl, mm -mm -mm. those shoes are gonna look even shorter on you. For my personal opinion, don't go for shorter shoes just because you're tall. Um, unless of course it's a look you like, then go for it. I haven't really seen anyone talk about that, and so I really wanted to throw that out there. Just because you're taller doesn't mean you should buy shorter shoes. Today we're talking about is heel height, okay? What shoes should I buy for my first pair? What heel height should I buy? Well, it's subjective, right? You, as a beginner, in my opinion, should probably start with seven inch. Seven inch is pretty stable. It's pretty standard for, for heels. Usually people are most of the time wearing seven inch or wearing eight inch. Not a whole lot of half sizes in the heel height. So usually they're gonna be seven inch or eight inch. That's what I usually wear is eight inch. So like I said, seven inch just looks a little bit shorter on me since I have longer feet. The seven inch heel, like so, is great for beginners. It is lower to the ground obviously and uh, you're gonna just feel more stable overall in the seven inch than the eight inch. Of course, depending on the style that you choose as well, we'll go over that. But yeah, seven inch is a good standard heel height. I had purchased some six and a half inch heels for my students to, to buy from me, and they were just a little bit short for my liking, so I only purchased seven inch and a couple eight inch for sale on my shoe rack now. If you are doing, for your first pair, if you are doing the sandal kind, go for seven inch. If you are doing the boot kind, doo -doo -doo, you could do eight inch more so than the sandal kind. <laughs> the reason I say this is because as a beginner, you're gonna want ankle support. So the boots are gonna provide you with really good ankle support. So you could kind of get away with eight inch, even as your first pair in a boot. Whereas if sandals for your first pair that you want, I would 
definitely go for seven inch just because there is less ankle support in the boot. So essentially the taller the heel, the more ankle support you're gonna want, right? So usually um, boots are gonna be a lot more stable for you. Some people like the open toe boots. I do not, I like the closed toe. And this is again, subjective personal preference. I like the closed toe because I have this fear of ripping my toenail off <laughs> and I'm, when I'm sliding my feet on the ground and so I, if I am going to be on the floor, I'm going to use boots and they're going to be closed toe so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I'm pretty hard on my feet and uh, I don't really like to worry about my toes so much, especially when I'm on the floor doing floor work so I tend to opt for the closed toe shoes. Open toe shoes are super cute and a lot of people really love them so if you like that little peep toe look go for it. And the sandals I only use when I'm up on the pole rather than on the ground so that's just me. The next thing we're going to go over is sandal straps. So I'm going to grab two pairs here. Go with two black pairs okay these this pair right here is a seven inch shoe with a um, faux leather strap and you can see this strap is pretty thin it is not very thick not very stable and then of course the toe part is the same type of material here these are going to stretch out quite a bit when you wear them and there's not much you can really do about them stretching out, so just keep that in mind. They are, these, this pair does have like the shiny material, um, patent I believe it's called, and so it's a little sticky on the pole, but it's not like the sticky boots, of course. The other pair I have here that's an eight inch has the nice thick plastic straps, and these straps are going to keep you nice and tight in your heel. They don't stretch out as quickly as the faux leather kind. So usually when I'm recommending heels to people, no matter the heel height, I always recommend getting the nice thick plastic straps. And they do have shoes that have other colors of the plastic. So some of them are white or red and they're the same type of like plastic or jelly material, but they're the nice thick straps. So um, they're like an inch, inch and a half strap, I'm just guessing here, but you can definitely tell the difference between that strap and these thin little faux leather straps. So I have had, I think this was like my first pair of heels, and so I did get a seven inch, which was a good choice, but I did get these thin straps, so not very much ankle support. I would recommend not getting those unless you are of course comfortable in heels already and can wear just about anything. They also do make shoes with no ankle strap, so no strap in the back. I I don't even know how people dance in those. I feel like I would feel like I would go into an invert or just somehow the shoe would fly off of my foot if I didn't have the back ankle strap. So definitely recommend ankle straps, especially if it's your first pair. The next thing we're going to talk about the difference between seven inch and eight inch toe slants. Toe, um, some people call them the point of your shoe, some people call them the toe um, or the angle, whatever you call it. It's the little front part that has the little, ooh, 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 little angle on it, okay? I'm gonna grab actually that same pair just so we can keep with the theme. You can see with these seven inch shoes, there is a slant, doo -doo, a very um, subtle slant on the bottom there. So that is your little toe box that you're going to roll up on when you're doing heel work or base work. The other pair, the eight inch pair, you can see has a very dramatic um, slant in the front. And this is again, what we roll up onto. So with the eight inch, you can roll quite far up onto that little toe. Whereas with the seven inch, since there is less slant, you can't roll quite as far. You can see the angle of the shoe isn't um, as high of a degree, right? So personally, if you're doing heel work, standing, um, base work, floor work, low flow, I would highly recommend the eight inch for that type of uh, pull downs. Another thing to keep in mind is the actual weight of your shoes, okay? The sandals tend to be, for the most part, lighter than the boots. There's less material, less to the shoe, lighter it is. Right? So, and that's a general thing, okay? Because I do have this pair of light up 
shoes and these are heavy because they have all these lights, uh, light bulbs, um, I'm not sure what kind of uh, light up things they have in here but there are a lot, a lot of wires and a lot of light bulbs I'm assuming and that's what makes them so heavy. So this is the pair of sandals I have that are probably my heaviest pair of shoe out of everything so it makes everything quite the challenge. So keeping in mind if you are going to be up on the pole or maybe if you your legs get tired quickly, keeping in mind that different shoes are going to weigh different and so it's going to make certain tricks harder. Uh, if I mean again if you're looking to condition, <laughs> nothing wrong with a little extra weight if you want to make it harder on yourself. But typically the heels, these jacket slant sandals are going to be a little bit lighter than the boots uh, in general. The great thing about the boots are that they are sticky. So especially the patent shiny vinyl looking boots. These are nice and sticky on the pole. So if you're a beginner, it's going to really help you climb. I really love the boots for certain tricks that are painful on the top of the foot. So if you want a little extra tack, the patent vinyl boots are going to be a great option. A disadvantage to these suede shoes, these ones are kind of cloth, um, this uh, stretchy, strappy material, and then like this, the faux suede on the back. These are, not only are they not sticky, but they slide. So you have to be very strong to be able to do climbs and pretty much anything with your feet on the pole in these types of shoes. So these uh, pair of faux suede boots, very worn by me for floor work. They are amazing for floor work because they slide so well on the floor. So I highly recommend material shoes for floor work, but if you are trying to get on the pole, these make it a lot harder. And you can see the point of my toe is very worn off here because I use these pretty much every floor work class. As far as material, there is the patent I've been talking about that is the vinyl shiny material that is sticky, the suede like I just showed you, and then there's also the like matte leather, faux leather looking shoes, and I only have one pair of these. <laughs> These are also the only pair I have that are over eight inch. These are 10 inch heels, matte, leather looking material. And these are good for floor work, not so great for up on the pole. They, I wouldn't say they are slippery, they're not as slippery as the suede heels, but they're definitely not sticky. So they're kind of like an in-between sort of situation on the pole, but they are great for floor work. I think I'm going to be talking about is sizing. And for me personally, I wear a size 10 in every single pair of shoes I've ever worn. And maybe that's weird, I don't know. I see a lot of people who have to size down or size up depending on the style of shoe that they purchase. And I would say the general rule of thumb, if you are in between sizes, say you're like a seven and a half, if you're buying the sandals by a size seven, if you're buying closed toe uh, boots, then I would probably size up to an eight. So just depending on which style of shoe you're purchasing. So people tend to size up in the boot style and size down in the sandal style if you're in between sizes. So if you are just a true size, I would probably stick with that size. But just depending on what brand you're buying as well, um, my suede boots are from Hella Heels and Hella Heels tends to run a little bit smaller or I guess a little bit more narrow than the Pleaser shoes. So I still wear a size 10 in those, but they are tighter than the, the Pleaser shoes. So keeping that in mind, it just depends on, again, which style you're getting. I would say look at reviews and have different widths of their foot, of course, are gonna wear maybe a size up if you have a little wider foot or a size down if you have a little bit more narrow foot. If you're true to size most of the time in your sneakers and regular everyday shoes, I would say you're most likely gonna be the same size in pole heels, but again, depends on the brand. If you can try them on ahead of time at a studio that sells pole heels or um, a shop that you can find them in, I would say try them on and see which size works the best for you. This clear pair has a nice round stiletto, so it's just a circle, nice round point at the bottom. And this pair is rounded in the back and square on the front, so you can see the actual point of the shoe is a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit thicker at the bottom. And because of the square front part of the stiletto here, these shoes are a lot more stable. Again, this is subjective, but for me, these tend to be a lot more stable than the round stiletto 
Unfortunately, most of the stilettos are going to be these ones. Most of them are going to be the round ones. And honestly, I do really like the look of the round ones, but the square ones are going to be pretty uh, stable, a little bit thicker. Uh, yeah, all around just a little bit easier to walk in, especially if you're walking on the floor without the pole, and this is going to be a good option. These ones are actually seven and a half inch heels, so they're a little bit taller than the sevens, a little shorter than the eights. I prefer the look of these to the seven inch. I just like tall shoes, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's another option. If you feel like you're gonna have a hard time walking in heels at all, I would highly recommend the square um, stiletto backed heels and maybe a seven or a seven and a half if you want to go a little higher without going to an eight. I hope that this video was helpful. I kind of separated it uh, between the different subjects of the heels, but as far as a beginner shoe, I would highly recommend a seven uh, to begin with, but if you really like that eight inch look, then definitely opt for the boots just because you have more ankle support. I would say the patent shiny vinyl looking boot is gonna be your best option. And usually they tend to be a little bit tighter on the ankle and the foot compared to the suede or material boots that tend to stretch out a little bit easier. So I would say definitely the patent boots or and patent boots in an eight inch or the seven inch sandals with the thicker plastic straps. Of course the style of the shoe doesn't really like the actual design of the shoe doesn't really matter. They have lots of designs out there. I have literally looked at every single pair of shoes that please ourselves. I think that the most common shoes are also going to be either the clear heels or the black boots. Those are, tend to be the most used. And there's a lot of flashy shoes on the websites. There's a lot of pretty colors, a lot of shiny chrome, bedazzled things. Those are really cool, but to be honest, the shoes you're gonna reach for the most are probably gonna be black or clear for the most part. They're gonna go with all of your outfits. I stick with at least one pair of shoes that's either black or clear that will go with just about everything you're gonna wear, and that way you have your like go-to heel that you can just pair with anything. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is shoes without heels. Well, I only have one pair of these, and these are actually a custom pair from Toes on Point. They are a gorgeous shoe. They are holographic. They have these hand um, set crystals on them. I absolutely love these things. They're so pretty. I don't even want to wear them because I'm afraid of messing them up. <laughs> but these are not as hard to walk in as you would expect, right? Because even when we're in the shoes with the heels, the stiletto, they're, you're mostly going to be walking on the uh, box of your shoe, the platform of your shoe, right? So you're pretty used to that. If you've worn a couple of the eight inch pole heels, you're mostly walking on that platform and you're not really using your heel a lot, or at least you shouldn't be. So these don't feel hard to walk in at all because it feels like you're just walking on that platform. Uh, I've never fallen in these that I remember. So, and I'm, I'm pretty clumsy, so. <laughs> These are really not that hard to walk in. I don't wear these for any sort of floor work or base work, really. They're mostly just for in the air, so I don't mess them up. Boots versus sandals and how hot your feet are going to get, okay? Especially with the thigh-high shoes or even the knee-high uh, patent leather shoes are going to be very sweaty, okay? These materials are not very breathable. So keeping in mind, you are gonna get sweatier feet, hotter feet in the boots, so they're great for winter time if you get cold winters, but during summer they can be pretty miserable. It makes your whole body temperature rise because a lot of uh, heat escaping your feet, of course, so the sandals are, are really good for summertime. I hope you guys enjoyed this Heels 101 informational video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below and let me know if you guys want to see more poll related videos. And let me know if you guys have any video requests in general uh, in the comments down below. Please hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to my channel. And hit the thumbs up button if this video helped you out. Also follow me on Instagram. I have my poll Instagram, my regular Instagram, and my studio Instagram all in the description box down below. So follow me on there and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.